Hey everyone, welcome. It wasn't that long ago when I introduced to you this, the Diamondback Crimson 29er, a hardtail that provides amazing value definitely for Canadian customers. We're getting ready to put some upgrades on it, so I thought I would give you folks a before and after, just in case it helps anyone else. So let's get to it. And what we're starting with is this. We're looking at nice and wide handlebars, Tektra Origa brakes that have 160 millimeter rotors front and back. This is a RockSox Judy, 120 millimeters. It has the TK damper, which is not the greatest, but that should be okay. I have Arden 29er 2.4s installed on these WTB STI rims. Impressively, these are 30 millimeter ID rims. And as you move back, you're gonna see a WTB Rocket seat 30.9 seat post this is a size medium and the impressive part about the bike is definitely the drivetrain and if the cranks are this unknown pro wheel type and the chain is a kmc we move back here and we see original slx parts we're talking both the shifter derailleur and the 10 to 51 tooth cassette this is a 29er as you see over here and it does come with pedals unfortunately these are not the type of pedals that we would use we pretty much changed six things on this bike okay seven with a bonus one and i call them cheap upgrades because it shouldn't cost you more than a couple hundred bucks what are we talking about and the first ones to go are going to be the pedals the three points of contact with the bike one is handlebars one is seat one is pedals you're going to need a 15 millimeter pedal wrench if you remember towards the back to loosen them up. And that would be the same on both sides. And what I'm going for is the cheap 520s from Shimano. Again, look for the one that says, that has R here on the spindle. And you're gonna rotate this towards the front to install. Grab your 15 mil. And as you rotate back, you tighten it. Remember, this is the 40 newton meters. So you gotta put quite a bit of torque. Here we go, do the same on the other side. Next point of contact with the bike is the grips and the grips are very su subjective. We like a good set of grips that are not too soft, not too hard. And we like the thin ones. Now the ones that come with the bike are nice and thin, but they are a bit hard, a bit harsh. So I'm just gonna replace them very easy. This is a three millimeter Allen key. They come right off and i'm pretty sure the bond trigger uses a three millimeter as well and as you're done with the grips make sure that your controls are properly adjusted to you make sure that they're inwards as much as they need to be and also make sure that the angle here is proper so you have kind of a straight elbow wrist and the finger that sits on the brake by the way this is a five millimeter add-on key that you're gonna need just to adjust your brake properly. I'm gonna get rid of this little reflector because if we are to ride at night, we're definitely gonna use proper lights. I don't know about you, but I absolutely hate dirty stanchions on the fork. So anything you can do to keep them nicely clean and lubricated would definitely help. It's called a mudguard. You get the cheap ones, the flexible ones that are held on with zip ties. And not to mention that you can beautify your bike. Look at this. This is RockShox branded, just like the fork. Just from the first ride impressions that we did with the bike, you can see here the chain stay was just pretty much beat up really bad by the chain. That is because it doesn't really have proper protection. What I usually use is this Scotch rubber mastic tape 2228. Just grab the appropriate length to cover most of it, if not all of it, and just press it in place and it's gonna make your bike quieter as well. And while you're doing this, just remember that the down tube here on the bike is not protected with anything whatsoever. I usually use 3M. This is nothing but what they use for the cars. This is pro most probably leftover bits and pieces that smart guys put on Amazon. But this is what I use the 3M transparent film, put on the down tube, and at least it's gonna keep that paint looking nicer for longer. You end up with a nicely covered down tube on your bike. It doesn't cost you an arm and a leg, actually it costs you probably 15 bucks. And all you need is salty water and patience. And here comes the biggie. 
On this bike, the seat tube is fairly short. If you look here from the rails all the way to the minimum insertion point, we're talking 20 centimeters, which is pretty much eight inches. That's definitely not long enough for some people. I know it's not long enough for my son. However, instead of just replacing this with a longer seat tube, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reuse my uh, good old uh, Fox dropper post. I had a video on replacing this one with a new version, the one with the Kashima coating. But before we managed to install the dropper, we took the bike to the cottage. And let me tell you, in the right hands, this bike is a very capable, at least trail bike, if nothing else. You can see my son here having fun with his friends. Maybe it's because of the more aggressive geometry, but this bike can do a lot, pretty much in that stock configuration. Back to our dropper, I'm not really gonna do a live installation for you folks, only because I have it done in previous videos. I'm gonna link that in the description. This bike came with all the extra grommets in the little baggie, so I have pretty much everything I need to run the cable through the frame. But there's one thing that's probably worth considering as you're running that cable through the frame, and that is to wrap the cable housing with something like this. This is Jaguar internal housing damper. But here's a little trick for you. If you don't have access to something like that or it's too expensive, you can use this. This is called braided wire loom, quarter inch or six millimeters. You can actually slide this over the cable and it will have a very similar effect as in dampening the sounds that otherwise might come from this aluminum frame. And one last thing that you can do to upgrade this bike would be tubeless tires. Now, if you remember, this comes with a Schrader valve, not Presta, like all the bikes do. However, the WTB rims are tubeless ready and you can use something like this. This is the miles wide tubeless valves. Turn that into tubeless if you want to save some weight, make the tire more compliant. Don't worry about the fact that you don't see TR here on the sidewall. If you use the proper sealant, you can run them tubeless, no problem. At the end of this exercise, we ended up with a better, more comfortable, safer bike that definitely didn't cost me an arm and a leg, hence the title of the video, Cheap Upgrades. Now, what kind of money are we talking about? And I would say $250 would probably cover most of these upgrades, if not all of it. You don't have to go for a Fox Transfer dropper post. This is a 150, by the way, 30.9. You can go for TransX or BrandX, which have been very reliable for me. By the way, this is a BrandX remote that is not pretty. It takes a bit longer to install, but you know what? It worked just fine. Otherwise, I didn't change anything here at the back of the bike. I kept the same Arden 2.4s. Yes, they're not tubeless right now. These are not the best tires you can get, but they would do. Pedals are the cheapest, Shimano 520s. Highly recommend these. I had uh, this water bottle cage that again it's a couple of dollars you're looking at something like this mud guard which can be had for probably 10 15 and otherwise i haven't changed much else up front of the bike you know about the grips but that was definitely optional okay okay i did reverse the brakes because we're running moto style and that means front brake is here on the right and yes i did put a little bit of protection here on the frame and down the down tube but again all that stuff would be optional but we're definitely very happy with the way bike turned out overall so what do you guys think about upgrading a cheap bike like this with the components that i suggested do you have a similar bike that you're planning to work on over the winter would you change any other components than the ones that I mentioned here? Let us know in the comments below. Let me know if you liked the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. And until next time, hope to see you folks on the trails. Cheers, guys. Cheers.